Jesus. How oh, people coming together today? Oh, God is good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God is really good. Uh, he's so good. He's allowed us to make it together one more time. Give the Lord a hand praise for that. Amen. We thank God for the doors being open today. We thank God for Pastor Bland, who uh, I pray God has given him a word for us. And as he always does, and I'm just so grateful to God for his word. I'm grateful to God for his consistency. I'm talking about God right now. I, I'm, I just thank God that he is trustworthy. But I thank God for the man of God as well. So without further ado, say amen for Pastor Bland. Good morning. Put your Bibles and let's look uh, in Romans, the book of Romans. Uh, many times, you turn that down just a little bit. Many times, uh, people are instructed to read the book of Revelation. And, and I think that that's an ego thing, or maybe some pride thing. Uh, they think that uh, the book of Revelation is a book uh, that is difficult or a book that is deep, and that if you are reading it, then you are deep. You are uh, really, really doing something. But actuality, the book of Revelation, deals primarily with the nation of Israel. We should know about everything that God has written in his Bible, from Genesis one to Revelation, I believe it's 22 and 21 or something like that, to the end of the book of Revelation. Uh, but the books of the Bible, Romans through Philemon, are books that were written by the Apostle Paul to the body of Christ. The body of Christ is different than the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel were a people who were started through Abraham in Genesis 12. God created the heavens and the earth and man uh, through Adam uh, decided that he wanted to decide for himself. And so they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which gave them their mind. Uh, it's very funny. We went to a, 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 just a marvelous family. How many people love their families? I, I, I love my family. Now, I, I got to know how to deal with them, but I love my family. My family has been supportive. My family has, uh, in actuality, uh, motivated me and inspired me to a better life. But one member of our family has maybe a 12-year-old or 11-year-old now, and she came up to Lady Deborah and myself yesterday and said, why you didn't tell me that these teenagers or these preteens just turn into something? She said, I'm looking at my child and I'm asking them, you mad this early in the morning? Oh, you don't want to be here no more? You don't have to live here? And it's, it's just so funny what happens to us as human beings when we know something, yes, sir. when we start thinking that we can guide and direct our own life. Man had no problem until Genesis 3 because God directed his life. But when he got the knowledge of good and evil, then it was a problem. He hid himself from God. And man was uh, gone astray. And the Bible said the thoughts on his mind were continually evil. And you go from Genesis there, and he has a flood, and he saves eight people by water. And those folks, uh, time that they, uh, when Noah, uh, Noah got drunk, time he got off the boat, I think. And so because of Adam, the seed of Adam, because Adam is our father, we come here corrupted. We come here like a computer has a virus, and no matter how you fool with it, it just still is just messed up. And the thing about it, uh, Brother Moss, is because of our pride and because of us being lifted up in ourselves, we want to act like that we different than other people. Amen. 
We sit around and we talk about folks. Oh, do you know that he did this? And do you know that he did that? Knowing good and well that if you're not doing it, you just stopped. Amen. You just stopped. And that's the reason uh, that more than revelation, uh, each member of the body of Christ needs to read the book of Romans. Because in the book of Romans, it explains to you the process of how God took an unclean thing and makes it clean. How do you get right? How do you get to heaven? How do you get justified with God? Not because they told me the clothes that you wear, the music that you listen to, the stuff you do, the stuff you don't do, the church you go to, the church that you don't go to. They got certain churches that if you don't go to this church, then you're not going to heaven. The Church of Christ Church of Christ, they are, they'll invite you to their church, but they're not ever coming to your church. They are not coming because it's Christ's church. That's what they say. But you see, the book of Romans explains to us that you are made right and you are justified only by what God did. You see, the problem is, is that we think that something got something to do with us. We so nasty, we so out of the way, we so... You ever looked and thought somebody was something and then you got to know them and you realized they ain't no more than nobody else? We think when people got money, we think when folk got nice cars, we think when they got this, we think that it's a little something different about them because they are on another level. But the Bible says that God has concluded all of us on the sin. And you see, the thing about sin is, sin is so selfish. Sin is so selfish that we can't help but hurt somebody. I used to love, when I was drinking, I used to love Brother Moss and say, well, I ain't hurting nobody but myself. I ain't doing them a line. You cannot sin without hurting somebody. And the thing about it is, the secret to life is being present. And when you are in sin, you're not present. You got folks that come around just long enough for you to be happy so they can go and do what they want to do. We get better as we get older and we, get, we learn more. And in working with that little baby back there, you know, I help Lady Deborah bathe, I, I help clean her, I do this and do that. And the thought came to me this morning, Deborah, I must have didn't do nothing when Vanna Jr. and them were coming along. I don't remember doing nothing like that. My mind was, you a woman, you the wife, that's what you, you know, that's just how stupid I was. But what I love about God is, is that God is a transformative God. Yeah. Just because you a fool, you ain't got to stay no fool. When I get out of my pride and get back, I, I quit worrying about you talking about me, and I allow God to move me from where I am, because you know what? The, they sung a song a long time ago saying, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do the same thing for you. So I may not be where you are today, but God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think. But all the thing, thing about it is, it's done through God's grace. Because God is not going to have anybody come up to him and brag about who they are and where they are and look at them. God didn't have no bragging before him. Everybody that come to God gonna have to just say, you know what, God? I couldn't help myself. I wanted to do better, but I always found myself right back in the same place. But when I humbled myself before you and got honest, you came in and your spirit allowed me to do what I just couldn't do. And so therefore God gets all the praise and all the glory and God says that I will not share my glory with anyone. And so then, I'm glad to be here this morning because I feel like I'm on the right road. I feel like I'm hearing the right stuff. I'm not hearing what I need to do, but I'm hearing what God can and will do if I will get out of the way. What I'm hearing is, is that I'm not no worse than anybody else. I'm just using the wrong formula. The reason I can't get to the right destination is because I got the wrong direction. I want to go, but I got the wrong direction. But when I get the right direction, 
The, God even told Israel, Mother Brewer, he told him, say, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat of the fruit of the, of the land. And so this morning, I'm so glad that y'all ain't gonna keep me here all day. I'm glad y'all didn't make me put on no hot soup this morning. It's hot. Y'all stove up and stuff. I used to see folks, I came from the sanctified church. They be all at the swimming pool with, with, with. You know, religion make a fool at you. Religion make a fool at you. And then what I come to find out is you trying to impress folks that don't care about you no way. And people grin in your face and talk about how you, ooh, girl, that is really pretty. Ooh, that, you know, get me one. You, can you, where you get that from and everything? Time you leave talking about something somebody should have told her. <laughs> look like, look like somebody would have told her before she came out the house. Thank you, Jesus. So then, God always meant, Brother Lacey, for us to be led by him. God had never meant for us to be led by ourselves. No matter how smart, no matter how many degrees we have, no matter how many people are, are, are hyping us up, because we like to be hyped up. The title bishop, we love bishop so far that folks going around talking to bishop ain't got no church. They talking about they got bishop ain't got no members. They talking about they bishop, they ain't got no kind of, what you a bishop over? Well, we just made him a bishop because I come here to get some help. Amen. And you know what else I found out, Sister Linda Cole? I found out that you have to learn how to enjoy life for yourself. Amen. You can't sit around waiting on everybody else to get on board. And, and you, you, you're sitting around waiting for folks to appreciate you. And you're sitting around waiting for folks to see something in you. And what, you got to see something in yourself. You got to know who you are. Know what you do. Let God lead you. God will lead you into a better life. Don't make no difference. Who know about it? You have to go around bragging and boasting and telling everybody about where you live and what all you got in your house and what. Don't nobody care. Don't nobody care. But I tell you what, if you can appreciate that chair that you sit down in, you know, it might, my chair might not be as big and as luxurious as yours, but I promise you, this chair right here, I thank the Lord for it. So I ain't crazy, I'm just trying to get a little sense. A little walking around sense. Especially since I found out that, that, that salvation ain't got nothing to do with uh, how many uh, uh, flips I turn. And how, you know, you have to prove to folks that you saved. Honey, I believe she really saved. <laughs> I don't think he's saved no more. Come up to you at church and everything. What's bothering you? You, you bothering me. That's what's bothering me. Uh, the Bible said we're saved by grace. Grace means that ain't nothing I do, nothing, no, no money I give, no, no nothing, nothing. I'm saved by grace. I'm saved because God is so good. God, I, didn't, I didn't deserve it. God gave me what he wanted me to have. Give me Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. I'm so grateful. I got so now. I don't want to hear nothing but this right here. Don't be telling me about here. Because you know what? I'm so inconsistent. One day, man, look like I be doing a thousand. Look like, man, I'm just as holy and everything. Ain't got a bad thought on my mind. The next day, I'm ready to cuss everybody out. I'm ready to... Y'all y'all look at me so funny. Ephesians 4 and 32. Ephesians 4 and 32. Go up just a little bit. Okay. Here the Bible says, and be ye kind one to another. Do you know what kind is? Yes. Kind means... Uh, that I don't have to do it. I don't, I don't have to do it. Do you know there's very few kind people? You only kind when God is working through you. When it's me and I give you something, you know what, man, come on, uh, I'm gonna take you to lunch and everything, because every time I look up, you're taking me to lunch and whatever. All I'm doing is paying you back. I ain't being kind to you. But he said, be kind. When you kind, you do something for somebody, they don't even deserve it. 
Have you ever bought lunch for somebody that you know wasn't able to buy you no lunch then and ain't never going to be able to buy you lunch no more? You're talking about inspiring the joy of the Lord. You're talking about your life being, and what I'm talking about this morning is, I'm talking about life on a higher level. Ain't this something? Look at God. Right here in the middle of the lowest minded folks that are in Arkansas. I don't think you can find no more low-minded folks in the world than in Philip County. Look at God. Jesus said, a root out of dry ground. God, how you do this in Philip County? How you bring your word and prepare people's heart to receive this level of living? Have you seen your living, your, 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 your quality of life? Have you seen it lift since you've been coming here? I've seen the quality of my life. The circumstances and stuff happened to everybody. I had a brother to die, I've had a daddy to die. Uh, I've been in bankruptcy since I've been pastoring here. Uh, but, the, but the quality of my life. But most, I've been able to believe that, that no matter what happens, that God is working it together for my good. I've been able to be assured that neither height, nor depth, nor power, nor principality, nor thing present, nor thing to come shall be able to separate me from the love of God. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right because I'm not dependent on me, but I'm dependent on God being who he says he is. And all of us have had disappointments. All of us have had people that disappointed us. All of us have disappointed ourselves. But if we be truthful, we've never, ever found no fault in God. God was always faithful when we wasn't faithful. Uh, when we deserve to be thrown away, when we deserve to, uh, to be destitute, when we deserve to not get any favor or anything from God, the Bible says that God is the Father of lights, and in Him is no variableness, a shadow of turning. The one I'm trusting in, Brother Brimley, no matter what I do, He remains God. I was so messed up in y'all church because y'all had me feeling like, you know what, if you live right, God will bless you. If you give a certain amount of money, it's going to be If you do right, whatever, you know, I'm supposed to say that now, you know, you give somebody, your, your, your blessing is coming. I'm blessed right now. As a matter of fact, I'm seated together with him in heavenly places, and all spiritual blessings are upon me right now. The reason my life is different now is because I believe something different. And you ain't going to make me believe nothing else. Because the Bible says what he says, and he believes, and he ain't talking about Peter and them. He's talking about me. I am who God says that I am. I am. And if I, you know what, Lady Deborah? And if that's not the truth, I might as well throw this microphone down, go on home, and every Sunday morning, wash my car and find something else to do. If I'm not going to believe God, I need to leave him alone. God will allow you to live above your circumstances, okay? God will, will yeah. you sitting next to folk this morning, you don't know what nobody going through. Come on, y'all, we want to sit here and judge folks and whatever, but you do not know what, what anybody that's sitting here is going through, what they're facing even tomorrow. And so then even with my circumstances, when I realize that Paul says that I have learned how to be content. One of the best spiritual advisors that I have, he probably don't even know it, and that's Robert Wright. He, he's a spiritual advisor to me. And so many things that he said to me resonates with me. And one thing that he always says is, he says, Vandal, 
I've learned how to sit, I don't remember what the number is, house is, but it's on 4th Street. I've learned how to be able to sit down on 4th Street and be okay. I ain't got to be running all up and down the road trying to find this person. Have you ever been like that? Just you get an answer. You want to go here and you want to go there. But Paul said, I have learned how to be content no matter what state that I'm in. I didn't come in today to tell you this is the last day you're going to cry. I didn't come in to tell you that when tomorrow you're going to get no check in the mail. I don't know that and you don't know that. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know this. He that holds tomorrow holds my hand and so no matter come hell or high water the God that I serve I've walked with him too long he's taken care of me too long he's made too many ways he's opened too many doors for me to turn around now and I guess my title of my message look at your neighbor look him right there now and, and tell them, say, it's not about me. <laughs> and tell somebody else, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad that it's not. I'm so glad that my relationship with God is not based upon my consistency with God because, Brother Bremley, I try. God knows my heart. God knows I love him. God knows, but I'm just like Apostle Paul where Paul says that the things that I said that I'm not going to do, I find myself doing them. And Paul cried out at the end of the seventh chapter, and he said, oh, wretched man. Uh, that I am. You see, if a person don't want to do no better, it don't bother them. A man that ain't going to work, he, it ain't, he, he ain't worried about the lights being off, but you're going to work every day. You're showing up and steal your money funny and your change is strange. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? What Manasseh has done for me is, is I'm able to quit, I really, I'm able to quit worrying about what you think about me. You see, I got to meet God for myself. I be God for myself. And what I learned, Sheriff, is you talk about me today, you'll find somebody else to talk about tomorrow. You see, because that's what you do. And so, so Kat, I don't, I don't hang around folk that talk about folk because I know that's what you do. <laughs> you with me and you're talking about Mother Minnie, but when you leave me, you go, you go to somebody else, you're going to be talking about me. <laughs> you ever been around somebody and you were ready to go, but you were scared to go because you knew that when you left, they were going to be talking about you? It has enabled me to be okay. You know what? Whatever you think, whatever you do, but I'm finna be about my business. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be about my, I'm, I'm getting ready to, to find out who this God is. That mama drug me to Sunday school. I'm finna find out who this God is and what is the basis of our relationship? Is it what the church told me about I had to do this and I had to do this in order for God to have something to do with me? Or is it what the Bible said? Because the Bible says here, he said, be kind. And tender hearted. He says, forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. The secret to life is being present. If you in yesterday, are you in tomorrow? You missing in action. You be present. Don't be hauling that stuff over from yesterday against folk. And don't be looking forward to tomorrow because most of the stuff that you think will happen tomorrow is never going to happen. But the Bible tells us, he says, be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. And then he gives us the way to do it. You see, it's one thing to tell somebody something, but another thing for you to show me how do I do it. He says, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, it's not about me, and I'm sure glad it's not. I'm so glad it's not. I'm so glad that before I ever got here, God made a way for me to be right with God. And I ain't got to quit listening to Bob, Bobby King. I ain't, got to quit. I ain't got to quit doing nothing. Because you know what? When the pain outweighs the pleasure, you will stop. Ain't nobody got to tell you to stop nothing. Yeah, it's a whooping. God, like, my God is like Miriam Nero Edmondson, my grandmother. My grandmother used to have you to go get your switch. And that's the way my God is, but my God let me go get my switch. Uh-huh. The same thing make you laugh. 
will make you cry. And the Bible says, even as God for Christ's sake, I ain't got nothing to do with it. My righteousness has nothing to do with me. Leave me alone about the clothes I wear. Leave me alone about the places I go. Leave me alone about this old messed up behavior that I do. You don't understand. I got issues that go all the way back because I wasn't the captain of the football team or because I wasn't the cheerleader or because I didn't get the best look or because I don't, didn't have a six pack or because I didn't make as much money. I got issues. And so I got stuff I got to try now just to find out that it wasn't nothing like what I thought it was. You see, when somebody loves you, they give you room to become. Yeah. And that's the reason you don't fool with folk who only want to attach to you once you made it. You can't ride when you couldn't push the car. Now you want to ride. Now you want all the benefits. Now you want all the glory. But you didn't want to be a part of any of the story, any of the process. And the Bible says that we are being molded and shaped into the image of Christ. None of us uh, look like what we're going to be. But God is making us. I've learned a whole lot more down in the valley than I ever learned up on top of the mountaintop. I learned some things, Mother Moth, down in the valley. I learned down in the valley that everybody that grin in your face ain't your friend. I learned, I learned down in the valley that I don't need who I think I need. I learned down in the valley that I can make it. I learned down in the valley that if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. I learned down in the valley that if I make my bed in hell, he'll be there right there with me. I learned that in the valley. Up on top of the mountaintop, you got a whole lot of fake friends. You got a whole lot of hanger-ons. You got a whole lot of uh, a bandwagon folks up on top of the mountain. That's when you're so surprised that when you fall, how they do you. And that's the reason that the old saints used to tell us, they said, wear this world like a loose garment. <laughs> Baby, don't let them hype you up. Keep your hand in God's hand. Don't you be moved. Don't you be easily turned. Don't you be turned by every doctrine. The Bible says that even as God, for Christ's sake, have done what? Have forgiven you. And that means, yes, I don't have to instead of be going around lying to God. God forgive me, I won't do it no more. God forgive me, I won't do it no more. I'm already forgiven. I'm already forgiven. Let me tell you something. And what I'm talking about is life on a higher plane. Okay? And when you get life on a higher plane, either folks have to come up to where you are or leave you alone. I'm talking big boy stuff now. Let me tell you something. Uh, if you decide... Uh, that you don't want to hang on the corner no more. That you want to go to work and try to have something. There's some folks that was hanging on the corner that can't have, they can't stand you no more. They're going to say stuff to try to drag you down. They're not trying to come up where you are. And the reason is, is because they're too lazy. They don't want to do what it has to do. The Bible, Jesus told Israel, he said, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence, take it by force. Look at somebody and tell them, I had to suffer for this. I had to suffer. My marriage, my, as being a parent with my children, my child had to suffer for everything that I got. There's some lonely days. Let me tell you something. God will cause it where ain't nobody walking with you. God will cause it where the folks you've been talking to every day, it seems like you're talking Spanish and they talking Chinese. <laughs> You ain't going to be able to lean and depend on nobody but God. But I want I got some good news for you. When you come up out of that, when you come up out of that, ain't nobody got to tell you who God is. You can tell them that my God is a rock. He's a fortress. I know him. 
I know him for myself. <laughs> I know him. <laughs> and yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, <laughs> I'll feel no evil. <laughs> I'll feel no evil. <laughs> Why is that bland? Because God, my God, he's with me. They lied to me at church. They told me that when I quit paying tithes, he was going to walk off. They told me that when I went back to my ways and started sinning, he was going to walk off. They told me that when I missed so many Sundays that he was going to walk off. But I come to find out that he'll never, ever leave me. You see, the reason is, is that my God's kindness toward me has nothing to do with me. I always use my mama as an example. I thank God for her coming back. Uh, I praise her. Give the Lord a hand praise for that. She's able to come back. My mama, and probably yours too, has always been able to convey to me, I love you. I love you. When she had the extension cord, something I would never do, take no extension cord and put it on no child. Well, that was good for us back then. Don't y'all do that now. But even when she had that extension cord, even when my mama talked to me harder than anybody that I ever, I remember one time I was at Arkansas State University and my mama was coming up there for a workshop and a person, person is slick, he is slick as he can be. I had been smoking some of that sense of red sense of alien with person. I'm giving you a testimony, person. And we came out of Twin Towers and man, my eyes were red, but person so slick, he had got some of that Visine and put it in his eyes. And his eyes were just white, Uncle George. And I came, my mama, I walked right up on her. And my mama looked at me. She said, look at you. You look just like Silly Willie. I felt that little, y'all. I'd rather her put that stitcher cord on me than tell I was grown. I was grown. I was grown and in college. And my mama told me, she said, don't you, she said, you be in this house when the light come on. She told me that. But this little girl had told me that nighttime is the right time. <laughs> and I made a conscious decision you're going to have to beat me. <laughs> and truth, and what she said, and I did. <laughs> but I never, ever, ain't nobody sitting up in here can make me believe my mama don't love me. You can't make, you can't make. <sighs> and see, that's what we was missing, y'all, at church. We did not have that assurance with God because they had put all these conditions on God's love. It ain't no conditions on God's love. One night, Vander Jr. had just went crazy. He had an anger problem. And Vander knocked the hole in the wall and I had to hold him down and all that stuff and I called the police. The police came and got him and took him right there to West Helton, took him up there and put him in the thing. <laughs> Instead of me going on home, I don't put him in jail. I'm sitting right outside the thing. <laughs> After about 40 minutes and everything, I went inside. Y'all can let him go now. I take him home. <laughs> See, we didn't have that assurance because they was teaching us it was about us. But he, he never saved us. He never loved us because of us. But he loved us because of who he was. God can never do nothing but love us, y'all. And so he loved us so much that he left heaven and took on the form of a man and came and died and bled right there on Calvary's cross in order to pay the price to bring us back to himself. Uh, that's his grace, his kindness toward us. And our only part is to believe it. 
the Bible says you are saved by grace through faith. If I will believe, if I just believe the gospel, if I believe that the death, burial, and resurrection, his spirit will take me to the cross and kill that old man and take me to the grave, and I will be resurrected a new creature in him, not myself. Paul says, I'm crucified with him. It's no longer me, but it's Christ. He says in Romans 8, after admitting that he can't stop doing what he's doing, he says, therefore, there's no condemnation. Y'all, this is the freest I ever felt in church. I, I promise you, there ain't nowhere in the world I could come up here on a Sunday morning with some old funny looking shorts on like this right here. Talking about I'm preaching to nobody. And y'all so free, it don't even bother y'all. What they do that at? They do that when they got the truth. When they got the truth. I'm not what I wear. I'm not what I wear. I'm not what I wear. David's own daddy didn't see nothing in him because of the job that he held that was keeping the sheep. He didn't even call him up because truly God can't use him. But the oil wouldn't come on nobody else. And they had to go get him. And when they brought him, the oil flowed on him. And Samuel said, the God that we serve does not look on the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. The reason that you bless like you are is because of your heart, baby. It ain't because people, they ain't see nothing in you. They had overlooked you. But because of the heart that God has given you. And so my only part is just to believe God. And that's the reason I'm here this morning. I'm here this morning to build up my faith. Because what we are learning here this morning is contrary to everything that's outside that door. Every, even in the churches that's meeting this morning, they telling folks that you got to do something in order for God to love you. Or either they'll say something real crazy that ain't even in the Bible, talking about, well, God loved the sinner, but he hate the sin. That is... God does not, give me 2 Corinthians, I'm almost through. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. It's not about me, and I'm so glad. It's his kindness toward me. Ooh, y'all. Ain't nothing like being loved. You know what's going to happen when you get some sins? <laughs> you know what's going to happen when you get some sins? You're going to start hanging around folks that love you. That's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I see these silly old men that sit around. They used to, I don't get sit around. They don't let them do it now. But they used to sit around McDonald's all day long. They ain't even ordering nothing. They, they don't want nothing. They sit up there looking at all the little girls that come through there. Silly. And they got folks at home that need them. I told y'all that life is about being present. Were you there? Yeah. Were you there? Now the devil gonna tell you, ain't no use of me going, they ain't gonna, ain't no, but were you there? That's, I found out that 99% of it is just showing up. Yeah. Some kind of way, if you show up, God will work it out. If you just show up. But surely nothing gonna happen if you don't show up. Uh, I said 2 Corinthians 5, Go down to maybe about 19, and we're almost through. I ain't got about three minutes, so can't hold you. <clears throat> Set five and 19. Uh, go back up a little bit, maybe 17. <clears throat> now, this, this is it. This is it. Because of God's kindness. Woo! And so people say, oh, you just want to do what you want to do. It really ain't like that. I can't help myself. I can do all right for a while, but I'm just like, you, you can get any kind of car you want to get. It's got to have alignment sooner or later. If you drive it so far, it's going to get off. And that's me. And so my righteousness is filthy rags. I might do better than a whole lot of folk in everything. I can say some things a lot of folk can't say. Van Virginia, 41 years old. He said he heard it one time, but he really ain't. <laughs> he really ain't. He ain't never heard. He, he said he heard it one time, but he, that's, he misheard. 
He 41 years old. He never heard me say a, a cuss word. Never heard me no profanity. Ain't none of y'all heard it. Because I have. You see? So I might be better in some areas. But in some areas, I'm just plain ragged in. Okay? If you ain't making a hundred, if you ain't making, you know, I'm talking about I'm gonna jump across that Mississippi River and you can't make it but two feet, but I make it 10, we both gonna drown. He said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Because of my faith, because I believed in the death, burial, and the resurrection, it made me a new creation. Paul says that by the grace of God, I am what I am. Uh, you see what I mean? Part of, I have been, I have been, I, I have been um, underestimated a few times in the courtroom, especially by high building lawyers, because you from the Friday law firm, and you, it's a hundred of y'all, and ain't nobody but me, just one little old lawyer that's off in there, and I come in there and, and, and whoop you ragged. And the reason is because of what I believe. I believe we studying out the same book. I believe if I study this stuff like that, I believe that you ain't no better than I am. Let the best man win. And so what you believe means a lot about who, what your life is, the quality of your life. If you believe that you ain't, if you believe that you are not do nothing or that you ain't supposed to have nothing, you probably never will have nothing. And I feel sorry for women that have husbands who they don't believe nothing. I've seen it before. They're really sad because they love them, they wanna follow them, but you ain't going nowhere. He said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. I got two minutes, please let me. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Yeah. Not because of me, but because of him. I'm new because I'm in Christ. He says, and all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. We just read Ephesians 4 and 32. He said that God in his kindness, for Christ's sake, have God has decreed something. Let me tell you something. It matters who makes the decisions. It matters. And that's one reason that I took the job as prosecutor until they got tired of me, uh, because it matters who makes the decisions. I had some stuff where you got a boy that come in there and he had a gun because uh, they was uh, breaking in his house and everything. He forgot and left it in his backpack. This boy here on his way to college, he was playing football and everything. They want to come in and give him a felony record for it and everything. I dismissed all the charges. I dismissed all of them. We finna mess this boy's life up and everything. Plus, I just seen you do a, a white boy a month ago. You did it for him. It matters who make the decisions. Come on, y'all, wake up. And God being God, God has said that if I place my faith in the death, burial, and resurrection, he will call me righteous, justified, no matter what you call me. And that's reading Paul says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. You have to start believing for yourself because most of the folks that's around you are too weak. They're too weak. They can't stand. They, they, they're carnal. They're looking at what's going on around them instead of believing, believe in God and all things of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We are not supposed to be out here arguing at folks, talking about you, girl, you ought not wear that shawl dress. You ought not go to the casino. You, you, no, you, got, you, you need to get baptized, go in the world and baptize. Paul said, God didn't call me to baptize. The new creation has been given the ministry of reconciliation. We're supposed to tell men, women, boys, and girls, be ye reconciled unto God, God in his kindness, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. But you can't get the forgiveness until you believe it. And if you believe it, then God, through his spirit, will make you a new creation.
It's not about me. And I'm so glad it's not. Clap your hands for the Lord. 